Now, here's a curious tale, literally the story of a fish out of water. The Pacific Leaping Blenny, as it's called, Alticus arnoldorum. It spends its entire life on the rocky shores of Pacific Islands. But if that's not unusual enough, a team of scientists from the University of New South Wales here in Australia have found evidence that the Blenny was making preparations for life on land long before it left the water for good. Lead researcher Dr Terry Ord says their discovery about how the fish protects itself from predators came as quite a surprise. Having a fish out of water on land is just such an unusual sight to begin with. But we found that they seem to be a little bit more adapted to life on land than perhaps we originally thought. So the evolutionary ancestors of these fish were obviously coming from the marine environment. And it seems that uh, at least for being camouflaged to avoid being eaten by predators, those marine uh, fish were uh, almost pre-adapted for being camouflaged out on land as well to avoid predation from things like birds. Do you have any clues as to why they would have taken that evolutionary step when they were still living full-time in water? It's a really good question. It almost certainly has to do with the fact that on land, the backdrop for these land fish is intertidal rocks. and They don't go back into the water, so it's always the rocks. And so if you want to be camouflaged, you've got to be camouflaged to match that rocky background. Now, the marine ancestors live in the intertidal zone, so they're in the water, but they're still close to shore. So presumably there is still some frequency of rocky backgrounds that they're also trying to remain somewhat camouflaged to avoid predators from the marine environment, in particular fish. So although they probably wouldn't have been an exact match when they first moved onto land, they were close enough that they were able to at least initially establish and then evolution and adaptation took over and made sure that they were evolving towards a more even match to the rocks on land. So this was evolutionary coincidence, if you like, that it's happened in that way and that they were so well prepared for life outside the water. That's, that's a good way of putting it. Now, I'm wondering whether technically the blenny is a fish at all anymore. Uh, yes, uh, technically it is a fish because we classify organisms based on their evolutionary history and their phylogenetics and taxonomy. So nestled amongst all the other fish, now blennies are a, a very large family of fish. We have them throughout the Pacific and Australasia and throughout the world really. And it just so happens that uh, there are a few species out of this ginormous group. We're talking hundreds and hundreds of species here out of the whole group. But there's a handful of probably about half a dozen to maybe a dozen who have made this transition out onto land. When you see them on the island in the South Pacific or North Pacific, for example, Guam, they almost look like slugs hopping over the rocks. And it's only when you come up more closely that you see that, yes, they're definitely fish and they happen to be out on the rocks and they're hopping around almost like frogs. But um, in all senses of the technical terms, they are definitely a fish, but they're obviously a very unusual fish because they have made this dramatic transition onto land. Does that mean that even as the evolutionary process continues that they will always be fish? Depends on how far down the track you want to go. Now, way back in the late Devonian, a similar event happened at least several times actually where um, fish and other marine organisms actually ventured out onto land and from those initial steps I think it was 350 million years ago all vertebrate species that we have on land subsequently evolved so you know if you play the evolutionary tape out long enough perhaps 100 200 million years from now these land fish may actually have evolved into something completely different and more perhaps familiar to what we would view as your typical terrestrial animal. And in terms of your research into uh, the life of this uh, extraordinary creature, I mean, wh where do you go next with that? So many questions are opened up with each single study and this is just a common phenomenon with science in general. So for us we're quite interested in the fact that you have different but closely related species on many of the islands in the Pacific. I've already mentioned the North and the South Pacific. Places like Guam, Taiwan, Japan, Cook Islands in the South Pacific, Tahiti but they're also found in the Indian Oceans, I mean particular Mauritius and Seychelles. So the question that we have is if these are a land fish and they're not returning to water, how on earth did they get from the North Pacific down into the South Pacific? So our next goal is to try and figure out the biogeography and the evolutionary history of these really interesting animals. There you go, everything you ever wanted to know about the Pacific Leaping Blenny, courtesy of Dr Terry Ord there from the University of New South Wales.